Let's get into it. Now, the ministry has recently reduced the designated employer's threshold from 25 employees to 10 employees. Ms. Maria, can you just take us through this? Uh, okay, thank you very much and good morning to our viewers. Um, the issue of... Uh, Classifying certain uh, employers as designated employers is not a new thing. Uh, it's actually a requirement uh, provided for under the Employment Service Act, whereby it is required the, for the Minister of Labor to classify a class of employees, I mean employers as designated employer. Uh, the first classification was done in around 2015, whereby then the requirement was uh, any employer who employed 25 and above uh, to be designated as um, to or to be classified as a designated employer. Mm -hmm. So now, um, uh, coming to the latest development of the re uh, reduction of this th threshold, um, it began with a negotiation that was done by the Employment Service Board, uh, which is also provided for under the, the same act. Uh, this board uh, comprises of representatives from trade unions, uh, from uh, embrace organizations, uh, representative of the state and others. So they had, um, they had uh, they discussed uh, the sh the issue and then they made a recommendation to the minister to reduce the threshold uh, from 25 to to, uh, to 10 uh, employees that means then that each and every employer operating within the border of namibia uh, who happened to employ 10 and above employees is now um, classified as uh, designated employer and that means that they have to comply with the provision of the employment service act um, th th this uh, new, new, develop new development was published in the Government Gazette and it was published in September 30th last year. And uh, whoever qualifies is given the whole of this year up to the 30th of uh, September to make sure that they fully comply with the provision of the Employment Service Act. And I would also like to state that uh, th th this uh, reduction of threshold, um, it covers all the employers. It doesn't matter whether the employers are falling under private or public. It covers all of them, uh, whether in pri private or public sector. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Ngeyama, Ms. Maria did touch a bit on it, but what necessitated the threshold reductions? Yeah, she has uh, alluded to a number of key sectors which have agreed to it. Mm -hmm. uh, they both have uh, made some specific issues. And what have really ne necessitated uh, the reductions was the, the inclusions of the informal sector because it was largely excluded. And therefore, we know very well that the informal sector um, consists about of 56% of the workforce in the economy. And it is one of the major drives of employment creation in the country. And about uh, most of our youth, the adult population as well as the elderly populations, they are found in, the, in this sector. So by virtue of including the, 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 the informal sector, uh, more designated employer will be registered on the NIES portal. Currently, we are standing at 1,900. So meaning uh, the, the, the when we have now reduced the threshold, we would have more uh, designated employer that will be registered on the portal. And also more vacancies will then be reported onto the portal to create for more opportunities for job seekers to apply to those vacancies. And then the bureau will also have more referrals that it will send then to the, uh, 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 the, 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 the the designated employers for for possible uh, uh, employment uh, uh, opportunities. Okay. So, meaning the the the, uh, the gestures is well welcomed uh, by the ministry as well as the employment service bureau uh, for the reduction of the threshold. It will, it will has brings a lot, a lot of benefits in terms of uh, more opportunities for job seekers. Uh, so more employment will then be created. All right. Now you mentioned 1,900 um, employers, employees are registered, or employers are registered. Mm -hmm. At what what number are we looking for for the upcoming ones that will be registered at this point? Seeing that we are reducing the number. Now, uh, since the the the, the 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 pronouncement of the threshold, uh, more. Uh, 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 designated employer have been registering, so we are, we are, we are looking at maybe close to uh, a thousand or, 
or more of designated employer to start registering because if you look at the portion or, 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 or the employers that are representing the informal sectors, they are close to 60% in the economy. So we are expecting a lot of uh, uh, designated employer to comply and to register. All right. So the number will uh, obviously increase a lot. All right. Now, Ms. Hedimbi, what is expected from employers who have been designated? Okay. Um, what we expect from the designated employers is for them to make sure that they are registered. Um, registration, I mean, uh, they should um, conduct our employment service bureau under the ministry uh, to, to register. register uh, registration is uh, offered free of charge and it can be done either online or manually. Uh, manually there is a prescribed form that uh, they can use. It's also available from the ministry. And uh, when they register, the second thing that they should do is to make sure that Whenever there's a vacancy within their establishment, they should always notify the ministry about that, uh, that particular vacancy. Uh, that is for, for the intention, like he said, that uh, the ministry w refers job seeker for placement. That is for us now to look into the database to see how many, uh, um, how many job seekers we have that qualify for that particular position. And that's why we require them to report vacancies to the ministry. And then after then, uh, we refer um, job seekers to them. Mm -hmm. They should report back to us so that we have a statistic to see how many job seekers were placed. And then the last thing that they, 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 they need to do is to make sure that they submit their um, profile of their establishment to the, to the, minis to the ministry. Uh, they, there is actually a list of uh, um, information or to say there's a form that they can use to, 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 to submit their, 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 their profile to the ministry. All right. Now, Mr. Ngama, what is the position uh, of the ministry in terms of non-compliant designated employers? Yeah, the, the Employment Services Act is very clear on contraventions and non-compliance with regard to the provisions of the Employment Services Act. The Act outlines uh, and indicates that uh, any designated employer who contravenes or fails to comply with the provisions of the Act, especially subsections 1, 2, 3, 5, and 7, commit an offence. A non-convention is liable to a fine of two years imprisonment or 20,000 fine or both, depending on what the judiciary may uh, prescribe. So therefore, it is our call that uh, all employer, designated employer, they should comply with the provisions of the Act. We have seen a trend where designated employer do not uh, notify vacancies to the Bureau, and that becomes a contravention where they first choose to uh, the print medias to advertise their positions, mm -hmm. and that is uh, a, a already a contravention. So we plea that most uh, uh, that the, the first uh, consultations or notifications should be placed with the Employment Services Bureau before they choose the media. So that is where the contravention is coming in. We haven't yet issued any compliance order yet, but we have been with we have been consulting the Employment Equity Commission. We have already issued uh, a number of compliance uh, uh, orders with regard to contraventions of the Act. So we are going to follow very soon. So we are sending a very stern warning so that the employer really uh, should comply with the provisions of the Act and, uh, and really start to report vacancies to the Bureau. All right. Now, mm -hmm. talking about vacancies, Ms. Maria, let's talk about the Namibia Integrated Employment Information System. What is the system for? Okay. Um, Namibia Integrated Impro Employment Information System, abbreviated as NIES, mm -hmm. and uh, to many is popularly known as uh, Job Seeker System. Uh, it's a system which is being administered uh, by the Minister of Labor. Uh, it actually connects the job seekers and the designated employers, uh, meaning that when we register job seekers, we, we put them into the database, and also the designated employers, then when they register, they also have data, that database. That means then that if they refer vacancies, then the job seeker can apply directly from the system, also, the employer themselves can also recruit directly from the system, not really to recruit, but then draw um, qualified um, job seekers from the system. Yes, because that is where also people um, submit their CVs. Yes, and like he said, that is a requirement that before you apply as an employer, before you apply anywhere else, you should first uh, notify the, 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 the bureau that you have a, such a vacancy. The intention is to look at uh, the qualified job seekers that we have uh, so that we link them 
or so that we offer an equal and fair chance mm -hmm. to these um, uh, uh, job seekers. Uh, in a nutshell, that is the function of, of needs. It's available online. Uh, it can be accessed uh, by by each and every one. Most of the time, we have advertised positions. Uh, however, you can only apply there when you are registered as a job seeker, and you can only have access when you are regi uh, registered as a designated employer. And uh, one other thing that I would also like to indicate is that uh, when you register, you are given your login uh, credentials. Mm -hmm. That means that you are now able to access wherever you are. And that means you, you are able then, maybe if you want to update your profile, you can do so also at your comfort of your journey. All right. And you would say this system is very successful? Very much successful. We have uh, witnessed a number of uh, beneficiary from, uh, uh, from this uh, system. And it's very recommendable to the, to the employer, uh, considering also that you cut cost in terms of advertising mm -hmm. and also the advantage that you have in terms of uh, um, drawing um, poly suitable qualified uh, uh, job seekers from the pool of employers, unlike when you advertise, like, let's say, in the newspaper, mm -hmm. and then you only have a few uh, employer, I mean, job seekers that, uh, that, uh, that respond to your advertisement. Okay. Now, Mr. Ngama, last year the ministry registered 494 designated employers and placed 2,200 job seekers for employment in various establishments. Can I just talk about this? Because this is a milestone. Uh, good, very well. Mm -hmm. uh, the placement is a systematic process. The process starts with notification of vacancies and then it goes with the referrals of job seekers by the Employment Service Bureau as well as the job seekers and then it ends at the placement. So now in the current dissociation we have received uh, 5,769 notification of vacancy that were advertised by various employers in the economy sectors. Did you say 5,000? 5,769 okay. notification that we have received uh, that we posted on the NIS portal by various establishments. Uh, out of these uh, notifications, the Bureau managed to send or refer uh, about uh, 4,240 uh, referrals uh, who found to be suitable to various uh, establishments for considerations for employment purposes. And out of these, uh, uh, the employers only considered 2,200 mm -hmm. for placement purposes and uh, the, the remaining that were not considered were found not to be suitable uh, by their considerations and uh, screening methods and so on. So that's why they were left behind but then uh, uh, luckily enough we managed to place 2,200 as you are saying based on the records that you are projecting there. And I would also say this has also come as uh, the result of the registrations of 494 uh, employers on the system. All right. Now, Mr. Ngema, while we're still on you, what support does the ministry render to designated employers? Uh, the ministry has uh, a number of uh, support uh, to designated employers. Uh, number one, we conduct trainings of employer by the Bureau. Uh, and these trainings are specifically on the NIES system so that the designated employer understands the usage of the name integrated employment information when they are sending vacancies or posting vacancies, when they are doing their application tracking, as well as when they are putting their profiles. So, so, so we need uh, to, to give them that understanding through our trainings. We also uh, provide trainings uh, on the Employment Services Act and the various regulations that we have because we want the uh, employer to understand uh, the essence and, uh, of the, the Employment uh, Act so that the various uh, uh, provisions they are well explained and articulated to them during trainings so that they are not left behind in terms of issues of compliance and issues of offenses and so on so this is where they are being explained and supported we are also available uh, on our website where we have uh, various uh, uh, telephone countrywide of our offices where the employer can consult us if they need uh, some any other support and uh, we can also be found on our social media platform and so on so i think we are readily available to give our support Mm -hmm. All right. Ms. Hidden, be any final remarks before we let you go? Okay. Um, I would like to urge um, each and every embryo who is now um, falling under this new classification of embryo uh, uh, 10 and above embryos to make sure that they comply. Uh, it's actually a good thing to do. Uh, you have more advantage uh, to mm -hmm. consider. Uh, like I said, it's, a f it's free of charge. Uh, and uh, 
making sure that they comply not only to register but making also sure that they comply with all the provision of the Employment Services Act uh, because it doesn't um, benefit one at the end of the day when you register as a designated employer but then you fail to, to comply with other provision as provided for. All right. And when is the due date for registration you mentioned? Um, like I said, um, the, the registration is in go ongoing. Uh, there's no due date mm -hmm. because it's a law, it's here to stay. Yes. Uh, but then we are saying that uh, for the new reduction of the threshold, uh, all that are falling now within the new um, classification should make sure that they comply by the 30th of, um, of September this year. Then that means then if you f if one fails to, to comply with, um, with this requirement, like he said, this penalty, mm -hmm. then they will be um, accountable in that uh, in terms of if they happen to, to not to, not to comply with the, the, the requirement. All right. Mr. Ngeama, final remarks? Uh, yes, um, my colleague have alluded to. Uh, it is very important that the uh, designated uh, employer should uh, comply with the provisions of the Act and uh, so that this is uh, done in the best uh, effort so that we do not necessarily penalize and uh, contra uh, penalize and issue fines that might not be meant or be meaningful to, 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 to designated employers. So my call is for them to comply with the Act and uh, report vacancies to the Bureau, mm -hmm. as it has been uh, clarified already to them uh, within the prescribed of the Employment Services Act. All right. Mr. Ngama, Ms. Hedimbi, thank you so much for joining us this morning, and also just for informing and educating our viewers on uh, the threshold.